Welcome to the No More Leafies podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle, and we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees re-watching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are taking on mummies again with the 2001 film, The Mummy Returns, with our pod pal, Sam, from 4 Minutes 2. Hi, Sam. Welcome, hey. Sam. Hey, everybody. How are you guys doing? We are hey. doing well. I got to watch Brendan Fraser in a movie. I'm A-OK. <laughs> oh, Brendan Fraser. Such a heartthrob. Such an <laughs> ultimate action star. <sighs> he is amazing. He can do no wrong and he can do everything. It's yes. very rare. Very rare that you can do drama, comedy, action. And there's nothing that man can't do. He hits on all of it in this movie, too. Yes, Honestly. he does. <sighs> and then Rachel Weisz she's just lovely to look at i just want to go back in a time machine and say y'all need to fucking get your shit together and get her to come back for this third movie and stop playing you can't recast her it's not possible it wasn't possible clearly <laughs> yeah it's ridiculous but before we dive in let's get into some housekeeping if you love the podcast and you want to support us, here's a few ways you can. Did you know that writing a review and or rating us helps us get more listeners? If you want to be featured and help our podcast grow, head on over to Apple, Spotify, Podchasers, Good Pods, or your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review. And if you haven't subscribed to our show yet on your favorite podcast platform, it's time. Do it now. Thank you please. <laughs> and we have merch. Head on over to nomorelatefees.redbubble.com and choose some No More Late Fees swag. You can get socks and shirts and aprons and mouse pads. Pretty much anything you can imagine. It's on Redbubble. Well, let's talk a little bit about The Mummy Returns. Ten years after the events of the first film, Rick and Evelyn O'Connell, a.k.a. Evie, are settled into 1935 London, where they are raising their son. When a chain of events finds the corpse of Imhotep resurrected, the O'Connells go on a desperate race to save the world from unspeakable evil and to rescue their son before it's too late. And I'm just going to add a little bit that this, again, is white people in places and doing shit that they shouldn't be on top of bad parenting. <laughs> we'll get into that. The movie stars Brendan Fraser, Rachel Weisz, John Hanna, Arnold Vosloo, Oded Fear, oh, so sexy. <laughs> Patricia Velasquez, <laughs> Freddie Bogue, Alan Alun Armstrong, and Dwayne Johnson. The movie was written and directed by Stephen Sommers, and you can watch it on HBO Max. But before we start, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves would give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of, would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play on repeat. Five day rental. Would watch again. Two day rental. Uh, okay, but nothing to write home about. And same day rental. Scorpion King's poop trash. <laughs> poop trash. Yep. When did he poop in the movie, Dan? I just feel like he's got a dump real big coming out of him. <laughs> With yeah. the space. With this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Small compact <laughs> poops. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we'll start with you, Sam. What's your Y2K rating of The Mummy Returns? Probably five day rental. Okay. I thought the movie was really cool back when I saw it, but I wasn't like, I didn't obsess over it and realize how the perfect movie it was until later. <laughs> Jackie? Ken literally was like, you're pulling a Danielle this week. Because I know I saw this movie. I know I saw it. <laughs> I don't remember a damn thing about it. <laughs> so I guess it's going to be a same day rental only because I didn't remember it at all. It's a five day rental for me. Surprisingly, I pulled a Jackie and remembered the movie. And you know why I remembered it is because of the, the son, Alex. Yeah. So picture this. It feels like it's back to back movies with annoying little kids because 
it wasn't too far before this movie came out that the Star Wars Phantom Menace came out. And I was like, what the fuck's happening? Are we doing, is this a redux? So I do remember that very strongly, but I do have some new opinions after watching it as an adult. So <laughs> let's <laughs> dive into the box office. The movie had a budget of $98 million and the worldwide box office numbers are $435 million. The Mummy Returns earned $23.4 million on its first day of release. Then it made $26.8 million the day after. This made it the highest Friday and Saturday grosses surpassing both Toy Story 2 and The Lost World Jurassic Park, respectively. Later that year, those records were simultaneously given to The Planet of the Apes and then Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So, and it would become the fastest selling DVD ever in the United States with 2 million copies being sold after its first week. This record would be taken by Star Wars Episode One, The Phantom Menace, just two weeks later. Oh, so it came out the same goddamn year. Okay, so yeah, it was back to back with these kids. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> these damn kids. <laughs> I'm glad my memory is piecing it back together. It's wonderful. So this movie, it's supposed to be like 10 years later, but clearly it was eight, two. two years later. Yeah. And it got greenlit right away. Like as soon as the, the first movie came out, the executives were like throwing money at it. Like, let's do it. Let's, let's make another one. It was the morning after The Mummy came out. That's fast. And the reason why they said it 10 years later is because Stephen Summers joked that he wrote it so he didn't have to work with babies, <laughs> I which it would have been a lot harder to have like a newborn just like strapped to you while you're fighting mummies. That it would have been sense. cool to have this really cool nanny who was working for the O'Connells. Jonathan's always hitting on her. And then you find out that she's part of like this group of warrior women who were really watching the O'Connells because they knew they were going to fuck some shit up again. Just saying. Look, 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 look at how I fixed that. And then one of the other ones is watching the baby while they go beat ass. Who was wearing the bracelet? Who was wearing the bracelet? Jonathan. <laughs> Tell me he wouldn't do that shit. Exactly. I can't. I can't. <laughs> that's, actually, that's, that's actually not a bad edit right there that, that, that tracks because <laughs> i think babies would have been so much easier to deal with and it would have not showcased how bad parental units ev and rick were they were so busy wanting to fuck each other the whole goddamn time oh there is there's chemistry and then there is chemistry and I'm like are y'all gonna finish making out anytime soon because there's like a war ra raging around you nope. your son is literally getting kidnapped in front of your eyes and you are tonguing each other down I would I would point out that in that whole thing when he gets kidnapped if he didn't get kidnapped he would have had a little sibling that night <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm surprised they didn't have more kids they're fucking like rabbits over there it's insane. I, I'm just like, I feel uncomfortable watching this right now. And I feel uncomfortable for that child actor to sit there and watch it too. It oh no, crazy. he was living his best life. It was his favorite movie ever. That's, That's why true. he got the role. That's true. He actually turned down a role to be in Harry Potter. I don't know what his role would have been in Harry Potter. I don't think it would have been the main three. But he turned on a role so that he could be in this movie because he watched this movie, the first mummy, like crazy. And they turned to him and he was like an acting consultant on the movie if they <laughs> needed fact checks because he had seen the movie so many times. Oh, I love it. That's awesome. But I feel like if he were in Harry Potter, he was a Draco Malfoy. Maybe. Yeah. I, or what's the one with the camera? Cedric? Pa I mean, Colin I mean, McCreevy? Yeah. Yeah, McCreevy. I yeah. could have seen that too. But I feel better now rewatching the movie and saying, okay, I don't hate children 
as because like I really had a, a disdain for him. But no, it's really that they were shitty parents. No, they are shitty parents. Yeah. Really, no one like other than the whole letting them get the kid get kidnapped and like again tonguing each other down in front of him repeatedly. He doesn't. He's rude. Like as a rude kid, and yeah. like no one taught him like manners about no. this. He doesn't fear his parents, which is good. But like. No, no. And and Rick's relationship with him doesn't feel very paternal. It feels almost like Evie had a kid from a past relationship and he's like stuck with this annoying kid. That's- Ken said the exact same thing. He's like, are you sure that's Rick's kid? Because he doesn't <laughs> seem real concerned until like after he's kidnapped yeah. about the kid's well-being at all. I, I think Rick was going with the I'm a rough and tumble guy. Evie is like she's become basically a battle archaeologist you got to be able to to roll with the punches kid you're fine you're hearty you got it no it was it was giving me your mom's got some good poon on I'm kind of sick of you but I'm gonna ride it through that's the vibes I was getting for Rick and his kid it's tragic it's yeah. Second step daddy vibes. Like he's not even the first step dad. He's second the second. Daddy? Don't say second step. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, with that, let's get into the movie. <laughs> so we see the 5,000 years ago, and there is a warrior called the Scorpion King. And essentially, it's kind of like, I feel like it's like a Hun situation. They just want to take over whatever they can. And so eventually, seven years later, the timelines are very weird in this movie. It takes them seven years to essentially lose hit for him to lose his entire army from battling. And now they're lost in the desert, wandering around. They have no food, no water. So now they're just dying of dehydration. And he's the last one left. Oh, and Scorpion King's played by... The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is how he's credited in this movie because this was his first professional acting job. And he does not speak English in it at all. All his words are in, I think, Arabic. Yeah, ancient Egyptian. Ancient Egyptian. Yeah. And so he makes a deal with the god Anubis that he will serve Anubis if he is allowed to live. And allowed to command Anubis's army. So there's that. You want to add anything, Sam? I just, he bit that head of that scorpion so quick and so smooth. Like that was, that was good. I mean, I know it was probably not a real scorpion when he bit into it, but like, harsh. <laughs> <laughs> no hesitation. Sure, None. I'll be your slave for all eternity. <laughs> Fine, let me crush my enemies. And every 5,000 years, this oasis shows up. Something about an oasis and a pyramid in the oasis. And every 5,000 years, Anubis's army rises to fight. I don't know why they're angry and just fighting people every 5,000 years, but they are. And then they like, you have to defeat them. I don't know. It was very convoluted and not really well explained. During the year of the Scorpion King, if you get into the temple, you would have the opportunity to be in front of the Scorpion King. And if you best him in battle, you'll be able to command his army or send them wherever the heck you want. You basically become in control of his army if you defeat Scorpion King. There it is. And the yes. only way to defeat him is that spear. That's the only thing that can, I mean... I'm pretty sure if you hit him with an RPG, he'd probably go down. They didn't have that then. Yeah, but like, yeah, spear. That's cool, too. (laughs) So that spear, we see Jonathan has it. Where did Jonathan get it from? He probably stole it. It was in the Saddleback. It was where? In the Saddleback. So like in the first movie, they all left things. Benny had filled up a bunch of Saddlebags with gold. And that was one of, and that was the, one of the pieces of gold he got. Cause he literally, Benny was just grabbing gold and he was putting it on the camels. And then the camels that they took to leave, those were those camels. Benny had died in the, uh, the cave in. Yeah. For your uh, scarabs. Okay. So, so it's part of the treasure. And cause he did say, Jonathan said he lost all of his treasure except for that one piece of treasure. Well, he gambled it. He gambled he, it away, but that was his last piece left. Yes. So we're supposed to surmise (laughs) that the one thing that can kill the Scorpion King is the one thing Jonathan did not gamble away 
and Benny happened to put in a saddlebag from Hominoptera. Yes. Like the great audit they said, there's a thin line between coincidence and fate. <laughs> He's so damn sexy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I wasn't, but like, I was just, Jesus, that man is, He's just, you know, just, just a beautiful man. That is a beautiful <sighs> man. Any Anything that that man is in, I have watched. I even watched that show, Covert Affairs, that used to be on USA. Oh, my God. I because just grew up all USA shows. There was yeah, just so many. <laughs> there's so many, but, yeah, I watched that. And then he was, oh, there was something else he was in. Resident Evil. Yes. He was in yes. from Resident Evil, like, two to four four spoiler yes yeah two to four they had some hot people in the resident evil movies i'm not gonna lie they also had <laughs> mike epson in the resident evil movies so. and boris was in it too yeah mm. so Snack. another question <laughs> hit me so did rick have this magi tattoo the whole time yeah i from what i'm gathering i feel like rick was somehow ended up being an orphan in egypt he's from america but like temporarily became an orphan in Egypt and they tattooed all the kids in the orphanage with that tattoo. I guess it was a major recruiting station and then nobody told him. So that's why he had the tattoo. But he had he knew the secret code. Yeah, I don't know why he knew that. <laughs> they they didn't explain that one. But well, like that whole part could have literally been lifted out and like it brought nothing to the story. No. It was just you know what it was? How like let's continue this false narration in all of these movies that these white people for some reason belong in Egypt that's all that is mm -hmm. like he <laughs> is like some supposed to be soldier protector person, right yeah she's fucking Nefertiti my ass okay the fuck this which white as white bitch is Nefertiti y'all need which, to stop which she in some scenes, they call her Nefertiri because Stephen Summers said he didn't want boob jokes. That's and so he changed it to Nefertiri, but then oh, halfway through, I switched it back that. to Nefertiti. Because I was watching it how I always watch it with the captions on because <laughs> I'm old. No, I do captions. I will not captions. That's how <laughs> I got to read. Honestly, <laughs> I don't believe any single cast member in the main roles are of Egyptian African descent because Oded is Israeli. We know Rachel and Jonah and and uh, Brendan, Caucasian. Lachna is a side character, but I'm pretty sure he's also from Africa. So um, yes, Imhotep yeah, is. is from South Africa. He's from South Africa, which means colonization. I'm yeah. just, I'm going to throw it out there. He's a Dutch somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and Velasquez, that sounds like she's, what is her ethnicity? But it's not Egyptian. I know that. <laughs> you know what I really love is that the wiki for the mummy is called Rikipedia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a great pun. That's a I don't know. I don't know why it tickles me so much, but it does. No, it's a good because it's a good pun. That's right? why it tickles me so much because it's a great pun. Wikipedia. Wikipedia. <laughs> so now we are in a temple. Evie has it, they allude to Evie has been having visions, and she knows how to get places and do things because of when Anax and the Moon's soul was in her for whatever period of time it was in her, is what I'm assuming. Is that what you gleaned? I think it's because she is the or descendant, is because she's a descendant of Nefertiri. Yeah, sure, okay. She Because she's the descendant of Nephi, she can, she's getting the visions because it's scorpion time. She, oh! Like, that's why Rick was like, oh, when did you start having these visions? And then she was like, that's when, yeah. Yeah, it. yeah, it's just funny that they look exactly the same as they're reincarnating. They, yeah, that makes sense. Although I feel like mine was more plausible that just Anax and the Moon's soul was in her for long enough where she kind of absorbed some of her. When she, her soul wasn't 
Any... She didn't get her soul until the end. Like, well, she didn't get her soul at all. Like, she the Noxium had to like kill her to get to get like to be revived. Basically, she had to kill someone to come back to life, and he, she was sacrificing. That was that the whole mummies thing was so yeah. Wacky. And it was so much easier for him to become the mummy, like fully. Like he did all his steps real quick in comparison he, he only, to the first movie. He only sucked three people, where the first movie there were five people because yeah, he yeah. needed different bits and pieces. Well, it was also based off of who opened the chest, and those five people were there, so that's why he was able to get the five there. But like, I think uh, that I think the reason why is because he was when the first time it was opened up, he was woken up. Whereas the second time, he woke up with like he had his own army, he had his own like spellcaster, he had his own logistical team that can provide them with trains <laughs> he, like he woke up with like his whole team established right so it was like that's that's baby town frolics they can get all that stuff when you know the, the team is the, right. the spider monkey guards yes they oh. climbing walls and shit the mummy revived spells all of that stuff yeah. it was all ready set up for him well evie is in the temple she's like it feels like i've been here before she knows the secret safe combination to open a door well um she starts to have visions like you can literally see what she's seeing at the time yeah. and so she's seeing someone actually open that's how she's able to do it but then rick kind of throws it off and so she can't see it all it's not at will it's just happening yeah so while they're in like a back chamber alex their eight-year-old son they're just they told him to stay in the main room of the temple and so kids be kids he starts fucking around and and brick tells him build a better mousetrap and he's literally building a mousetrap and i'm like well that's an odd flex but okay and then these three robbers come in they're sent to get what rick and evie are after and so alex does hide but then homeboy instead of just laying low being quiet has his slingshot and starts slingshotting rocks at these men, hitting them in the neck and the ass. And so then he's caught and he's up on some scaffolding and one of the robbers like kicks the, the leg out of the scaffolding. And so now he's very precariously wobbling about. At the same time that Rick and Evie find a chest the key of which is conveniently located on a skeleton right next to the chest. It does show in these scenes that like how Evie and Rick have learned to compromise in their marriage. So like when they're first opening one door, Evie is trying to like chisel it with like small tools. And Rick is like, I think it needs to be done my way, which is to just like burrow. Crowbar. Yeah. Yeah. But then it, she tries to do it Rick's way and he's like, no, I think you need to do it with the key or whatever. So I thought that was kind of cute in comparison to them fighting in the first movie about how it should be done. Yeah. And so he and Rick open the chest. Evie does not read the inscription on the side prior to opening the chest. The Scorpion King's bracelet is in the chest. And then she reads and is like, oh, it says you'll drink from the Nile if you open this chest. And all of a sudden all of this water comes crashing in and they're trying to outrun the water while Alex is teetering on the scaffolding, knocks over all of these pillars holding up the temple, it seems. And it's very reminiscent of the first movie when Evie knocks over all the bookcases in the museum. And a lot of callbacks are in this movie. I just want yeah. To say. A lot. But in this scene, when they're running from the water and trying to escape, there is no sense of urgency in these moments that they need to get to their son. Yeah. There's no mention of where is he. There's no anything. And when he falls off the scaffolding, the next scene, you just kind of see him standing there. And I'm like, how the fuck did he get down there without falling? He so. was a good 20 feet in the air. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was weird. And then he goes over and tries to hold up a stone, like, 40-foot pillar. pillar yeah. Like, he's goddamn Hercules or something. Mm. But well, Maybe he's reincarnated as well. <laughs> Wouldn't put it past Stephen Summers at <laughs> this point. But when that pillar comes crashing through the wall, which in effect saves Evie and Rick because they were behind the wall. 
drowning. So yay, Alex. And Alex so, is all like, guys, I can explain <laughs> everything. <laughs> <sighs> and then they go back to London and to their house, which I, I just want to say that did Evie not learn any fucking thing from the last movie? I guess not, because she was touching stuff without reading it again, so. And when they get back to the house, why do you not, y'all are rich. You live at, like, Downton Abbey. Why don't you have security, something? Right. Oh, they're old school rich. They don't need security. They, like, most people are respectful. They wouldn't just rob them. And if so, she, that's what she has Rick for. Rick, Rick is good for, I'm going to shoot you first and ask questions later. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Brendan Fraser wanted for them to have a small apartment and not a big house. But because they wanted to do that, see that bathtub scene with Jonathan, they made it a, a bigger house, which I thought was cool. And brilliant. That yeah. was a brilliant scene. That was his idea. The actor's idea was to do well, that. Love it. 10 out of 10, hiding from bad guys in a bubble bath. <laughs> well that was done, Jonathan. So I guess he was planning on having that bubble bath with a certain someone? Yeah, like yes. when did he do that? Because we that, that was one of the things I thought about because we see him walk into the house. Like when did he have time? Is it a cold bath? Like what's happening? I think maybe he set it up and then they went and got like drunk somewhere and they were in a different room and they were coming into another room. Mm. Yeah, maybe, but who leaves the bathtub with water? It's weird. But we know some people don't bathe, so maybe it was just for like optics. I don't know. Not sure. Nice. While this is going on, they're back in London. We see Hamanaptra and there is a whole slave crew digging. So there are all of these, it looks like a cult and all of like this red hoods and everything. And like this red army is trying to find the Book of the Dead as well as Imhotep. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in the first movie, like, there was no body or anything. They just took Imhotep, like, the little chariot took Imhotep to hell. No, they, they took his immortal soul, soul. to the okay. afterworld. He, yeah, but like, his body he, fell in that, that like, Oh, the goo? And then, is that why he looks like he's covered in amber? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> it, it just reminds me of Terminator <laughs> with, like, that hand, like... Melting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Now I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so they find both Emotep and the Book of the Dead. And all of a sudden there's an earthquake and everyone's looking around like, that's weird. We're in Egypt. Why are there earthquakes? And then all of the scarabs come up and start eating everyone. Not ideal. So I, I love that we are, uh, so we're introduced to Ana the Anaximum Moon, I guess, reincarnated version of herself. And she's just like, she has the book of the, the a big of life and the book of the dead. And she's like, oh, also we're looking for him. And we're getting close. And then the earthquake happens and the scares come out. And like, she's like, we're getting very close. And then you just see her team just with, with flamethrowers, like pushing the bodies back and like burning <laughs> up on the scarabs. Like, oh, you know, you sometimes you hit a pocket, people die from a scarab and swarm. Just flame them down and, and just go back to digging. She does <laughs> not care. She mm -hmm. is ruthless. So they find his body and they bring him back to London because the leader of the Red Cult is the curator for the London Museum of History. Yep. And we, we learn this because Alex, Alex spends a lot of time there. <laughs> yeah. So meanwhile, we also see a figure turn around after they pull Imhotep's body out and it's Oded our death as our death. death. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, thank God he's back. <laughs> he, like, he's, just, he's sitting like maybe, I, he's standing, I want to say like 10 feet away from them, turns to the camera, showing his full face, <laughs> puts a mask over and walks away. And I'm just like, all right, look, I understand there's a lot of brown people around, but <laughs> that everyone, like, Lachna knows who Ardev Bey is. He is clearly yes. one of the top Jedi. He's like the James Bond of Jedis. I mean, <laughs> Jedis, uh, Magis. 
And like, <laughs> you're mean to tell me no one was just like, isn't that Arden Bay? <laughs> With it, I mean, he's quite noticeable. He has cheek tattoos. Yeah, so, I mean, so fun. It's so fun. Oh, it's so tattoos. good. But like, he like he's just, and I'm like, all right, sure. Stealth ten. He has a plus ten on stealth. That makes sense. It's fine. So we do get the exposition back at Evie and Rick's, where Rick's like, hey, it's the year of the scorpion. Anyone else find this weird? Evie, you're having visions. I think shit's going to go down. And then this is one of the scenes where they start making eyes at each other. Alex is fucking around with the chest we just brought back from a temple. No one's watching him. And Jonathan's in his room with his lady friend, which is then infiltrated by the Red Hoods. Mm -hmm. And so Jonathan's fighting for his life, grabs his last gold piece that he's held on to, which is this scepter thing, and is fighting them. Two things. One, around the same time they make googly eyes to each other, in the background, Alex had just put on the bracelet, got all these visions. And you can literally see him in the background going... <laughs> <laughs> And Rick is talking to me, he's like, I don't know what would happen if I ever lost you or Alex. You're the most important thing to me. I feel like, like he <laughs> just threw in Alex as a, a afternoon because he's yeah. just like, you, babe, and Alex. Yeah, and Alex is like seeing legit visions. And he's just like, holy crap, what was that? And then like, Jonathan, he's upstairs and he's like talking to a lady friend. She literally immediately just gets kicked out of the room by these the Red Hood people. They sit him down and put a knife to his throat. And he's just basically, they think he's Rick. And they're just like, you know, give us then give us where the, the bracelet is. And he's just like, oh, I lost that in the card game. He's like, I hope you didn't. And then the <laughs> Noxu Moon shows up and she's literally talking to him, like, hey, give us the chest. And he's like, and she's like, she has a snake. And he's like, all right, I gave you, he gives him the safe combination. And it's like, I told you where it was. And he's just like, okay. And he's just like, I told you this, so you wouldn't kill me. He's like, when did we make that agreement? And yeah, <laughs> she's ruthless. And I love how Jonathan still doesn't realize that they think that he's Rick. Yeah. He thinks because he's constantly scamming, he just thinks it's a normal day for him. No, they, he like he realizes that you think he's Rick, but he's just like, you know, oh yeah, maybe she's off out of bottom bottom or something. Did I tell you I'm single now? And he's, <laughs> he's trying to flirt with her. I'm like, really, Jonathan? They have a knife to your throat. Are you really trying to flirt? And the outfit a Nox and a Moon is wearing in this. She looks like Moria Rose when she was in the Crows movie. <laughs> she is like H yes. to T in feathers, yes. just carrying her asp basket. And has a veil. And has a veil, because why not? She's a, she has a kick-ass vibe to her. <laughs> she is not playing around. She is well, not. That is right when Rick comes in, and that is literally one of the best action sequences in the whole moment is so cool that is like one of my favorite scenes from like the whole movie yeah he just comes in blazing he was really good in this movie i think they try to up the action as much as possible from the second movie and i liked it but in some ways i really did love how the plot and the character building and the world building kind of moved everything forward and then towards the end we got like a lot of action i did miss that a bit in this movie yeah, but Brendan Fraser, for all of the efforts that we appreciate, he did tear a spinal disc, crack a rib, and injure his knees during this production. <sighs> the safety of these actors in some of these movies is just like, these studios rape the hell out of these people. I mean, to this day, Brendan is not the same because of his injuries from yeah. these movies. Well, in addition to Brendan's injury, injuries, Dwayne Johnson suffered food poisoning and sunstroke. He lost over 10 pounds and said it was the worst I have ever felt in my life. Oh my oh. God. That's insane. Yeah. Crazy. So obviously Red Hoods are looking for Scorpion King bracelet because they want to use Emotep to defeat the Scorpion King so that they can control Anubis's army. Yes. I'm so glad I got that right. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're still at the O'Connell house, their mansion appeared as part of the library in the first Mummy movie. Love a reusable set, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's probably somebody's house, like someone who actually works, like who's kept connected to the movie, just like, yeah, no, I have a very large library. And yes, no, I have a, 
I mean, you could just pay me. I mean, right. you pay me to work at my house. That's, that's how it works. You, so Rick realizes what's going on. He's able to like fight his way through this mm -hmm. whole situation and to the bathroom, they're shooting at him. And this is when we get the scene of once they, you know, once they start shooting at him after he's like been fighting, does Evie start fighting too? Like they mm -hmm. must've gone downstairs and I'm very proud of her in this movie. Rachel Wise kick ass in this movie. So much so ass. So much she ass. She is no damsel in distress ever at any point. Even when she's like tied up and they're like legit about to throw her in fire. She's just like, y'all can fuck off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She does call for Rick a few times, but yeah. it's very sexy. It's not Tame situation <laughs> like in the Power Rangers movie. So yeah, she's got moves and she's fighting, but I think there's a combination of like the things that she's learned from Rick because her son is like, what the hell's happening? Mama, you, you real baller out there. I see you. I there's a see part, you. She starts to fight up because like Ardeff comes in and like they're like, okay, we're gonna just fight you now. She and she had a sword already. She starts to fight off by like doing a somersault and smacking the guy with her feet as she's doing the somersault. And he's like, Whoa, mom, where'd you learn how to do that? And she's like, I have no idea. But she's just like doing that, and then she's getting choked out and she like kicks him in the stomach, like punches him in the face, like that I learned from your father. And, just, like, <laughs> and I just think to myself, like, there's a scene where Rick is just like so Evie. I love you to death, but at some point in your life, someone's going to try to choke you to death. No. So I got to teach you how to fight. <laughs> so it's actually from the first movie, that headbutt thing that he does. It's another callback to the first movie. The little headbutt thing. Yeah. Does, yeah. Like he must, but he had a, she didn't like watch him and just like, yeah, I'm going to totally do that. He had I'm to sure he that. taught her, but like it, that's what, yes, you're right. We're both right. We're no, both right. We, we know, we are. <laughs> <laughs> So it is a combination of what she has learned from Rick, but also her time as Teary, Nephi. Um, Nephi, practicing battle with Anox and the Moon. So we find out that Nephi is the daughter of the Pharaoh, and Anox and the Moon was his wife, wife to lover, be. girlfriend, whatever. Wife to be. Yeah, and so they practice a lot. Question: Like there is another flashback at one point where she and Anox and the Moon are battling. So good. Just. Yeah. I love that, that scene. I, I love this, that scene. It's the most memorable scene when I think about this movie, but I was even more impressed when I found out that both Rachel Weisz and Patricia Velasquez both trained for five months for the scene and they did the fight without any stunt women, which is freaking amazing. I had no idea. Because, like, they did a lot of backflips and jumps, and it was a lot. I yeah. did not, I could, I was, like, I was very impressed by that. There was a part yeah. where somebody, I think, uh, Evie and Nefertiti lunges at the Maximum Moon, and the Maximum Moon, like, drops into a full split. To yes. Dodge it. Yeah. So good. And we talked about it when we did the first Mummy, is just, like, having a heroine that can hold her own, and doesn't rely on someone to always be saving her is so refreshing in movies, especially from the late 90s and early 2000s. So the fact that Evie is the one that's doing all of the exploring, like Rick is there for the heavy lifting, but she's the one reading the hieroglyphics and finding the treasure and doing all this stuff. And Rick is kind of propping her up. Her. Yeah. So I really do appreciate that about these first two mummy movies is that they're very woman forward. But the red hoods, they grab oh no. Chest and they grab Evie. And That's they, right. They happen to knock out Evie and they grab her and they grab the chest because they think the bracelet's in the chest. Alex had already put the bracelet on. It was actually, they just didn't notice. But um, yeah, the red hoods leave. It's also the first time we get to see Lachna and like his like one-on-one -on -one rivalry that he has with us with Ardeth. Ardeth. Yeah. And like, they're just fighting each other and like, just like stuff. And then like, he cuts Ardeth and he throws a dagger at him and like, <sighs> wipes his cape over him as he's leaving. Real cool as they all leave. He was so smooth in this damn movie. I love, I love him in pretty much everything that he's in. I, I'm, I'm going to try not to butcher his name, the actor. So Adewale, I'm not doing real. I'm just going to say Adewale. That's yeah. all I can do. I'm very, very sorry. I don't want to butcher it anymore. But he was on the show Oz. 
and he actually left the show Oz so that he can do this movie. You may recognize him also from the TV show Lost. He came in towards Mr. Echo. Yes, towards the end, some of the later seasons. He was on the Born Identity. Yes, he's just been in a lot of things, and he's and he a great was in actor. Thor. Yes, yes, he's in MCU. Yep, he's just in a lot of things, but the swagger he had in this movie was mm-hmm. amazing, and. He, like he's a villain but I was rooting for him (laughs) and not in my normal way I just like love him as an actor and he just does such a good job and has so much charisma and just so much damn swagger in this movie so cool yeah Alex is like well they didn't get this bracelet because it's on my wrist yeah and artists like awesome it's the beginning of the apocalypse and we only had seven days yeah and i think he does explain that the bracelet shows you like how to get to place yeah and so now they have to go get evie yes oh alex when like he was just like i'm sure i've been following this man the curator like, he didn't know he was a curator, but he's like, I've been following this man. He he seems to know, he seems to be leading this stuff. And, like, Alex literally snatches the picture out of our death really? day's hand and says, that's the curator. And I'm like, yo, do you not know how to, like, say without snatching? And he's just like, <laughs> he's like that's the curator. He works at the London Museum. And they were just like, and they were like, he was like, are you sure? It's just like, yeah, he spends more time than anyone else does. Right. Rick is like, this is how I fucking get rid of him for a few hours. So, <laughs> yeah, he knows. And. Yeah. It's also during this scene where they do like the secret code because Ardeth notices Rick's tattoo. Yeah. So he's like, I am but a traveler from the East or something like that. And then Rick's like, I am a traveler of the West and I am who you seek or something like that. Yeah. And then they're just like, and I'm like, but what are we accomplishing here? Y'all are already allies. Like, why? So weird. Just randomness. Again, I already I said... make him a Magi, because he has to also be a Magi. That's what it has to be. I already gave him the explanation as what's, what's going on here. <laughs> we could either so, choose to ignore it, or we can move on. So now they're trying to locate Evie and the bracelet, and based on Alex's adamant confirmation of the curator, they head to the museum. And that is where they are doing the ritual to raise Imhotep from the dead. And then this is also when they realize that the bracelet is not in the box. Alex and Jonathan are told to stay in the car while Ardeth and Rick go inside to kick ass and take names. And so Alex, Jonathan, all about what the bracelet showed him. (laughs) And I kind of feel like it would have been smarter if they sent Jonathan and the son to a safe place. Yes. And not brought him where they could have snatched. It, it was just, again, horrible parenting. I don't think they have a babysitter or they have any other. Like, Jonathan, <laughs> you take Jonathan to go with you. Leave Jonathan him. Oh himself heart. needs a babysitter. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like, Jonathan is a coward person, but mm-hmm. he's good to, like, when it's chips are like really, really down, like really down, like they're. Really or when chips. Evie says, "Don't fucking embarrass me." That's what she <laughs> has to say to him. So we see Evie is a gift for Emotep. I don't know what they plan on doing. Just like because he had a grudge against her. Yeah, fuck her. That's why. <laughs> and they're literally throwing her in the fire. Yeah, so she was like, "Burn her!" And was like, yeah. <laughs> and so. Like, hey, Hey, I know you just woke up. Here's your crew. We are the vote of servants. I'm your, you know, reincarnation of your old ex-girlfriend. And we brought you this gift. Oh, and it's, oh, to this, they also have the line, my lord, it is the year of the scorpion king. And he's like, truly? (laughs) (laughs) As to this day, I say, I say truly to my friends. (laughs) Truly? (laughs) And he's just like, yes. He's like, it's <laughs> just like I got up, I got my army, I got my girlfriend, I got the Let's bracelet, do this. I got the, the wife of my enemy who helped put me into the thing. Let's this is, this is starting not right. I got this. <laughs> but then here comes Rick jumping over fire. So sexy. To rescue Evie, he cuts her wrist bounds. Um, and then they just start fighting people yeah no uh rick jumps in there 
freeze with Evie. And then as soon as he frees her, sets a gun up, gives it to her, and then they literally just starts shooting up the place, which again, harking back to what you're saying, she is literally not like a damsel in distress. She's watching his back, shooting with him. Ardev is at the top, Tommy gun in the place down, giving them suppressive so fire. Sexy. Uh, he was excited to get the Tommy gun. Yes. Because Rick let him choose his weapon. <laughs> also, this episode's a drinking game, and every time I say Oda oh, is sexy, sexy, you take a shot. <laughs> Thank you. I will say another thing I love, I love another callback. The, the mummy sees Rick and he's like, you! And Rick is just like, shotgun blast to the chest. And I'm just like, yeah. that's how we say hello. I see you, I shoot you. That's what's up. <laughs> Double tap, he should have. And, and then they like, realize there's a bunch of shit floating in formaldehyde behind all the red capes. So they just start shooting the formaldehyde tanks, which then cause fire explosions yes because that's how bullets work yeah <laughs> that's when Melda High will just blow up and then just take out it's everyone fine. in the background won't well, hit mean, it's, moon, but, it's you know. flammable chemicals it makes sense it, it makes sense that those people got blown up and not but it doesn't make sense that a Nazi moon her hair didn't even get frazzled she, mm. yes. from a flame and she's just like maybe she doesn't use hairspray and she has those blunt bangs. There is no way there's not product in that hair <laughs> with those blunt bangs and like stick straight hair that does not move an inch out of place. What I love is that like once they finally head out that <laughs> Evie's like trying to move a park bench in front of the doors and, and Rick is like, they don't use doors. Let's go. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You and know, of course, huh? those two idiots, Jonathan and the child, the two children, then breaks the key in Rick's car. So th then they are freaking out because they can't start the car. And so they go and get a damn double-decker bus. Which, how do they just get a double-decker bus? Like, at, like was it just idling and they just jumped? I don't even know if all of them could have fit into Rick's car anyway. So it's yeah. just like random double-decker bus feeling kind of insane and so they drive off or whatever and the, as soon as they're like skating out those creatures start to chase them and like rick said definitely didn't use any fucking doors messed up the damn museum yeah and, yeah and it's just he must have had summoned mummy servants to go chase after them and like he's one thing i like about rick is whenever he's idling he's loading a gun mm -hmm. so like he's like <laughs> he's stay ready yeah, he's just setting up a gun and like, he's just like, he's talking to Adef. He's like, are you glad to see me now? It's just like, just like old times. <laughs> and go. I did confirm the accuracy of how many shots he was putting into those guns with my two resident gun experts. <laughs> I was like, that gun right there, how, how many shots? Because Evie fired three. Is she supposed to fire three? They're like, yeah, it holds three rounds. I'm like, okay, just check in. Validity. But Making sure the continuity like, is right. <laughs> for her holding it like right in front of her stomach. Yeah. With no kickback. That's wrong though. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So Jonathan's driving the double decker bus while Arda, Evie, and Rick are fighting the spider monkey guards. And so we are told that the way you kill Anubis's army is to behead them. They are not Anubis's army. Oh, right, right. But is it the same for Emotep scars? Like, they're just sand. Why don't they just, like, sand back up and, like, come back? Because reasons. <laughs> <laughs> because reasons. You can take out a bummy, mummy if you if it gets hit against a bridge going at, like, 40 miles an hour. You can also <laughs> take out a mummy via shotgun blast and it won't regenerate. But, you know, reasons. Fair enough. So now we are crossing Tower Bridge. They actually shut down the real Tower Bridge for this scene. It was supposed to be closed for 20 minutes, but the traffic jam after the first 10 minutes or so brought threats of arrest from Scotland Yard, and so it reduced that closing time to just around 10 minutes. So Londoners don't fuck around with their bridges, apparently. And this is when they capture Alex and kidnap him and drive off, and they also raise the bridge so that Rick and Evie can't follow after them. And so now they know the first place that they are going because Alex had told Jonathan in the car, correct? Yes. He, he told all of them, basically. He was like, I went, like, I had a vision, and I went this way, and then I went that way, and then I ended up at this <laughs> temple. 
And so they know the first place to go there, but they need a way to get there. The Red red Hoods are taking a train. Yes. And so they have Alex on the train and they're taking the train to the first location. And, you know, Rick just knows people. And so he's like, don't worry, I'm going to find us a magic carpet. Cut to, what, what, was it literally magic carpet airways? Yes. yes. And... Rick's old pal, Izzy, who's real concerned about getting shot again, because last time he helped out Rick, he got shot. And Izzy's like, really don't want to help you. And then Rick gives him like a wad of cash. He's like, this is great. I live in the desert. What am I going to do with this? And but still doesn't, keeps Yeah, doesn't give the money back. He's still like, what am I going to do it. with all, with cash? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we find out Izzy doesn't have any ordinary airplane type situation it is a hot air balloon that like has a ship attached to it it is a like a blimpy ship dirigible thing it's, yes it's fast and he like he says it's fast it's quiet and it doesn't take a lot to travel and yeah so, so they're just like okay and so they go to the first location alex meanwhile is on the train He's, he's given Lochna a really hard time. He's just like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? I have to to use the bathroom. I would be too. But Alex is very strategic and cunning. And so he gives Lochna attitude about him staying in the bathroom with him. He's like, you're going to watch. I know it. And so Lochna finally leaves Mm -hmm. And Alex is trying to look for a way out. There's bars on the windows and stuff. But then he notices, like, essentially the toilet is just over a giant hole that leads to the train tracks. Well, there is an emergency pulley in the bathroom. So Alex just tears that toilet off the hole, pulls on the emergency pulley, and helps himself out of the train and starts running But they're close enough to the first location where they all just end up in the first location anyway and catch up with him. Like, they were literally, I guess, coming to the place where they were supposed to be at, and he decided to pull the, somehow the timing was just right that he pulled it so that it was there. But what I love is, one, Alex is running Serpentine, so obviously... Rick looked at Alex and said, someday someone's going to try to shoot you because you're annoying. So you need to know how to properly run from bullets. Serpentine pattern only. Yeah. But the second thing is, the guards are shooting at him. He has the bracelet. Why are you shooting at him? That's why yeah. he looks at, levitates one of them and just smacks them against the wall. Like, what are y'all doing? He's, you can't kill him. <laughs> yeah. The bracelet has chosen him. <laughs> yes. So, like, if he dies, this is all for naught. So, like, let's be a little more mindful. Of- Meanwhile, Evie is having more visions on the ship, almost tumbles over the side because she's so enthralled in her visions. Rick, without hesitation, jumps over the side of the damn blimp, catches her ankle at the last second, and is literally just hanging by a banister. They are like, I'll if you die, I die, very Letty and Dom from Fast and the Furious. Yes. I love, (laughs) but like they have a kid though, and it doesn't seem like that's not the priority. It's always the... In Fast and the Furious, they don't give a shit that they have a fucking kid. They don't. Like, I watched Fast 9 the other day, and I was like, these motherfuckers don't care about their kids. But I will say that I'm going to update my online dating profile to say, looking for my Rick to my Evie. Yeah. Just an Evie looking for her Rick. (laughs) (laughs) And if you know what that means, we can roll. They're like... Once Alex gets to the first location, we're going to lose him because we don't know where to go from there. But Alex, using the old noggin, asks for some water and builds a little sandcastle of the next location. (laughs) And so they show a montage of them arriving places, finding the next sandcastle, and then kind of going on from there. He leaves pieces of clothing at every one of those little sandcastles. So one... Y'all not watching him long enough that he can build a sandcastle. Two, <laughs> y'all not watching him enough to notice that he's leaving pieces of his clothes. He went from 
I have a, a jacket. I look like a schoolboy to like, I'm just some kid with t-shirt and jeans. And t-shirt. Yeah. And like, y'all didn't like notice that he's leaving clothing every place. They were just tired of his ass. They, didn't, <laughs> they, they were just like, oh, we got a break. He shut the fuck up for like 20 minutes. He wore them down. I think they underestimated him. We always underestimate children. Yeah, we do. I don't. They're, they're scary little, little monsters. <laughs> Well, so except Sam. Sam doesn't underestimate. Jesus. Yeah. So now they are by a river in the canyon. And I just watched Maverick. So it reminded me of Maverick, the like blimpy ship going through that like canyon trying to find the next station. Alex is building a sandcastle to tell them where the final location is. And Loch Nott notices, steps on the sandcastle and is like, this bitch has been leaving clues. Leaving breadcrumbs, I see. <laughs> and then Emotep is like, fuck this shit. <laughs> Raises the Nile and throws it through the canyon. First, can't the blimp go up above the water? Not fast enough. <laughs> well, the other option is try to outrun it. I mean, it's... Not like it was, that was very much a y'all supposed to die here. Yeah. And they just like, you know, movie logic did it out. Well, and then the movie logic, they like turn around after they like bob and weave and somehow have like photon torpedoes to get away from the water and end up where they're supposed to be at the oasis. So they jetpack out of the canyon and they can see the oasis from there. So like they were close. He just, I don't even know why Alex really needed to. Well, he didn't know how they were traveling. So he was just like, look, just go further down. But like, they were close and they just went out, saw it. And they're like, okay. But then it was just like, JK, there's a wave still behind you. Yeah. (laughs) So it brings down the ship. Izzy's pissed. He's like, where am I going to get gas to to restart this ship? And Rick's like, figure it out. We're going to go save our kid. He said, uh, if there's anyone who can figure out how to fill this up with hot air, Izzy, it's you. It's you. You know, oh. Rick with the zingers, but <laughs> if I was Izzy, I would have left his ass there. But uh, Izzy is do we man. ever find out how he gets that gas? He, he gets that gas because. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sam's explanations. Yes, <laughs> these are wonderful explanations. I just want to go back to the way of thing. After he does it, Hemotep literally walks into the show. Like Alex saw that whole thing. He walks into the show real swagger. Puts his hand on his head like, your family is dead. And then just walks past him. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was just like, ah! <laughs> he was just like, he just puts his hand on his head like, you know, good little boy, your family's dead. And just, Are that like, my daddy now? <laughs> but that's like the second time that happens to him because when Evie dies, essentially, spoiler alert, to later, Jonathan's like, <laughs> <laughs> she's in a better place. Like, bitch, your sister just died. And this is how, like, he is not consoling in any way. Rick doesn't fucking try to console his ch- kid. He just, he's out. This no, kid it's more of therapy. A, yo, no, he he took so much trauma to the face in like literally 92 hours, 96 yeah. hours. Now Alex thinks his parents are dead. After the ship crashes, like Rick's packing guns and ammunition and stuff. And Jonathan's like, I need my scepter. I'm going to bring that as my thing for this journey. And then we see the pygmy warriors show up as they get into the jungle surrounding the oasis. That yeah. was about Jumanji-like. Yeah. Um, Very random it. pygmy attack. Literally just little skeleton things come around, stabbing. Like, just random, just, like... <laughs> like, it was very pulled out of Jumanji out of nowhere. Kind of yeah. like, that just spiced things up. We'll throw some like random, like, you know, <laughs> small pygmy monsters. Yeah. And then there is quicksand because jungle. We Why have not? to have quicksand. And so there's, <laughs> as I wrote down, lots of shooting and fighting yes. is what happens in this scene. Eventually, Rick is able to get Alec. And then this is where Lachna is defeated by our death. Yes, they finally have their one-on-one fight. Also, to add on to the thing, during this time when they were on the ship, Ardeth had been letting the his troops know where he was going via his faithful friend Horus, his hawk. 
and Lachna totally murders that hawk right when they were getting there. He <laughs> shoots it out of the scare. And you see Lachna, Horus! And I'm like, oh, you killed this bird. And then it was goes, very Hedwig and Harry Potter. Yes. It was very sad. Yes. And he's like, I have to go tell them where we are so we can like prepare the army. He's just like, but I got to get my son. So he's like, all right, I'll help you get your son and then I have to go back in there. So apparently they were, I guess they were following pretty closely with, on horseback. So he was able to meet them and show them where the last bit is. But yeah, yes. Him and Lachna finally get their battle. <laughs> Lachna was originally going to go kill Alex. Like he was like, always like i'm gonna murder this kid now i could take his hand I it got dark real fast and yeah. then rick did his patent run in at the last second and scoop somebody up and run off with them like He's he like, had a football and the big game y'all he was running he and was like Forrest Gump. he yeah. was straight into the pyramid because that shadow line is like creeping right behind him yeah not um, to mention he's running like when he first gets him he's running with the shotgun and the pygmy start chasing him and he's like dad dad and he's like he turns around he's like whoa shoots one shoots another <laughs> one like rick has a lot of those split decision perfectly synced in his body moments in action yep. all the time he's always got the perfect aim he's always got the right slice it was at this point where i was like why is this child yelling all of his lines like he's Very just familiar. constantly screaming and i'm like there's no need for this tiny it, human well, it was like an hour before he dies because like as that was happening they were literally like 20 blocks away from the period of yeah and the sun was coming up so they were just like oh and he was like the brick they didn't and they didn't know the bracelet was going to kill him so they were like you guys you guys the bracelet you gotta, you gotta come on you gotta get me to the temple so he's like <laughs> running with them he's just, just like, want to see a one-man show of you reenacting <laughs> this movie uh, don't <laughs> tempt me <laughs> Give me enough money and enough alcohol and I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do I everyone's don't... lines. <laughs> and then uh, there's this scene with Jonathan where he's like, don't worry, the pygmies won't follow us. And then they do. But the pygmies are scared of Jonathan. Is that because he has the, the scepter? scepter? No, I think it's just because they weren't expecting that type of scream to come out of that man. Because so <laughs> like, he was just like, ah! and they were like, <laughs> what is that I'm, I'm out of here and it's like and he's talking to a guy who has a literal spear in his chest like Ugh! he's like sorry and he just runs off <laughs> and like they're all running and he's like for some reason jonathan's always behind when they're running they're all running as a union jonathan is somewhere always he's in the back always yeah he's, he's like running on the bridge and john and like rick is like hurry up jonathan he's like wait for me and rick with his trusty i have a stick of dynamite always anywhere he right throws it to and blows up the bridge and tails the last of the pygmies that they fall I'm like oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and if one of the pygmies rides the log down like in dr strange love if he had a hat it would be waving it it would a hundred percent so Rick runs Alex into the pyramid. He makes it in time, scores a winning goal, and bracelet pops off. As they're going into the temple, Motep and his bitch are walking into the pyramid. And she just like, like a, her. putting a knife into some butter. She just bleh, bleh, looks at her, bye bitch, and she keeps on walking. And like nobody does anything. And I know. Evie, Evie's like, <laughs> Um, one. I love you. Rick hurts that in the temple. He literally, he's like, as soon as she gets stabbed, he's like, you see his eyes go, hey! and he runs out to her. And like, you, like, you just see her. It's like, they did it. They finally got out of the temple. She's right behind her, comes in, stabs her, walks away, waves to Alex as she's going into yeah. the fucking temple. Like, <laughs> bye, Alex. I just this, your mom. She's the worst. She threatened this little boy earlier that she will put snakes. Like, she gave him a kiss as she told him, I'll fucking torture you, little child. Like, yep. she does not care. So Evie is now dying pretty quickly. Yes. Jonathan's no just, no blood, no nothing. Blood. No one gets blood on them. Just remember not, that. Not at all. Well, we had to maintain PG that per PG-13 yeah. rating, but there is a very rare instance of where the word fuck is used in a sexual context in this movie. So, playing fast and loose with the PG-13 rules. He's dead. Rick, don't Rick is broken. He is like touching her face like, Evie! And he doesn't stick around to check on his child. Jonathan says, woo, 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 
to his <laughs> nephew. No, but Rick, it was just very much just like this was the like the only thing keeping me alive. Revenge. You, you literally killed Evie, so now I have to go do. He he told Alex. He basically told Alex like, look, I, just, you don't matter right now. I need to go. Sorry, I got Daddy got some business to handle. Yeah. Basically, a Nox and a Moon has the Book of the Dead, which rises the living and so jonathan's like if we can get that book from her then you know how to read hieroglyphics alex we came can... up with that idea because oh i'm jonathan, sorry alex jonathan was just like you know as it says in the good book and he's like the book the book we can provide it with the book come on Uncle jonathan come on that was just so random and like what happens like she gets her soul like it just was it just goes it's just like a little fix. just a yeah. little fix so Emotep is essentially mortal now. Like he has no power. So when he and Rick go hand-to-hand combat in this scene, it's like, yes, this is what I have been waiting for. Rick to be on an e- even playing field with Emotep. It was chef's kiss. And Emotep, uh, I guess they train you when you're being high priestess how to fight in like super martial arts too. Because he's like, <laughs> there's a part where he like backhands Rick, like, Ah! And I'm just like, wow, okay. <laughs> he stay ready boys. too. <laughs> he's just like, yeah. And he's just saying stuff to Rick, and he's just like, and Rick's like, I don't know what you're saying. I just want to <laughs> fuck you up. Meanwhile, for some reason, Curator sticks his hand in a scorpion hole. Um, yeah. He has the because he has a bracelet, and he's just like, if I put it on, then maybe I will become the scorpion thing. So it will be like it will be my army, and it just drains him of his life force and it activates the scorpion that's when the yep. scorpion comes out and he's all like uh, and I was yeah like, this this right here now, not great I'm, okay it's 2001 that was not they, it was a it was a rush job that's it was the it was completed eight days before the film's release Oof. they were kind of close Oof. Kind of close. But even in 2001, like, I don't remember this movie, but I remember CGI, not great. I mean, like, you can't have everything. You can't, it's not all diamonds. You can't be completely on the same diamond. <laughs> so Rick notices while he's kind of fighting on the, the, the carvings on the wall show the scepter and then it becomes a spear because they give directions to how to kill the scorpion king in his pyramid yeah no it's like a final boss so you're just like look if you beat this guy <laughs> you get to get the army but it'll be real it'd be rude to tell you hey just fight the scorpion guy you need to you should also know how to beat him you, if you have this spear if you went to the right room you would have gotten the spear and you would have used this item to beat him if not go back retrace your steps get the spear and then come back <laughs> it's rpg 101 so he's yelling at Jonathan, the, the scepter is a sphere. And Jonathan's like, it's not a spear. And, and Rick's like, figure it the fuck out. I need it. <laughs> and so they finally figure it out. Jonathan throws the spear. Emotep intercepts it. And then Emotep throws the spear. <laughs> These idiots. And Rick intercepts it. <laughs> he catches it and like... He just catches it like a football. I will say there is a part where the, you saw Hemotep basically punk out a little. Because when the Scorpion King comes out, he's like going to him. He's like, I have a subway. Way. I have a subway. Way. Which is like, I am yeah. a servant. And it's just like, sure. I was like, but he points to He wants to kill you. Yeah. And Rick's like, I don't speak Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> but you can fuck right off, Scorpion King. Right. And just fights the Scorpion King. And they don't meet in real life, by the way. So like, the Rock is in this movie, but Brendan never met him. Which so is... you see Brendan just like dancing in the sky, fighting yeah. nothing yeah. in real yeah. life? Pretty much green screen. Meanwhile, while Rick and Imhotep are fighting the Scorpion King and the Spear and the Scepter, Ardeth is outside with the Magi army and they're fighting Anubis's army of the dead. So they defeat the army of the dead, high-fiving, yay, we did it. And then they turn around and look behind them and it looks like ants on a faraway hill coming down and it's just so many of Anubis's army and artists like, well, we're fucked, but we're going to do our best. To the death! <laughs> and they're like, yeah! And it's like 50 of them left. 
And he's yeah. like, we're, we're going to freaking do this. Back in the temple, Evie has been reviv- rev- Oh, wait. So, wait. So, before Jonathan goes into the temple to fight Rick, he, they, him and Alex and Jonathan go find a Natsu Moon because she has the Book of the Dead. So, they, Jonathan describe, they distracts her by fighting her. She's beating his ass. And, like, Alex is reading the, the Book of the Dead to bring his mom. And he's like, saying, wait, Uncle Jonathan, there's this one word. I don't know what it is. It's like a bird, a stalk. And Jonathan's like, wait, I know that, I know that. Knocks her down. And she's like, a manifest. <laughs> because he like, learns that in the first movie, which yep. is great. Another great callback. Movie, yes. I was just like, he was like, a manifest. And he's and like, I'm he, useful. <laughs> he got one lick in with her, though. He did. He did. Once, and he was very proud of himself. He did. But then Evie resurrected. No time passing, no like what's happening. She's like got her Xena sword things, and she's like, I, I got this. Oh, you can move on, Jonathan. So and good. She, she starts fighting, but this time it's not like the flashback when they were fighting. This time, Evie's it's very reminiscent of my best friend's wedding, where Evie's like, I've got moves you've never seen before. <laughs> Because she combines what she learned from Rick and her ancient Egyptian fighting style and totally throws a Nox and a Moon off. We didn't choreograph this. <laughs> She's like, this is not our routine, bitch. You're not supposed to headbutt like that. A five, six, seven, yeah. eight. Five, but we practice. And so she, you know what she says? Fuck this, I'm out. She, she hauls ass. The Scorpio King is defeated. He does do. Did. What? Did you say Scorpio? Kid? Is he born Scorpio? in October? Yes. Early October. <laughs> Listen, in all of my notes, he's just referred to as SK because I didn't want to have to keep writing his name. <laughs> so he does do a people's eyebrow for a minute before he is defeated. Love. So he's out of the way now. And like the earth opens up, and so course, Rick another earth, and, and it's the like the dead trying to pull them to hell or whatever. It's the underworld being open yes. up and stuff like that. Um, um, wait, sorry, the Rick killing the Scorpion King when he catches that spear in midair, he also lands, and as he's falling, he sticks up and somehow like uses the like he's hanging literally from the Scorpion King's guts with a sword with a spear in him he's just like go to hell and take your friends with you and he's like, just sit and, like, and, it turns into a thing. and then like back on the field our dev bay is like they're, they're like literally about to hit him and they just hit him like a black smoke and they just all just decept- like just this turn into smoke and our they just got blipped there. yes yeah and like they're just standing there and he's they're all just looking and our dev just looks to this guy and goes oh <laughs> I was just like, we're alive! <laughs> and at that point, Rick, he fell over a little bit mm-hmm. into the open earth, along with the crazy emo, ass, emo, emo. And so they're both hanging on there. And Rick can see Evie in the corner of his eye because she's by a pillar watching. And he already knows because they're so in sync. And he says, you better not. This bitch jumps over lava fall a temple and she is going to get her fucking man and uh, meanwhile a ox and a moon is like is cowering sorry being, about that <laughs> not not and he you know the emotep is like bitch I'm not so alone. Come Set away. She, Set she, away. she 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 runs she runs five thousand years i have been waiting for you for five thousand years we're finally reunited, and you're gonna do me dirty like this. She runs and so, off. Yeah, and she. He just gives up. He, yeah. he like lets go, and he's like, "Fuck it, I don't." There's no point of living if this. My whole purpose was this woman, and I'm yep. out. And so Rick and Evie are able to escape and get out, and they climb to the top of the pyramid, and they're like, "We don't know what to do now." The pyramid is like sinking. Yeah, it's sinking, it's blowing out black smoke, and they're like, like, we don't know what to do. It's like an Aladdin when that it starts to cave in. Yeah, the Cave of Wonders. Like, even the Oasis is all being sucked into that sinking at the point. Yeah, but then, good old Izzy, like, here. Hurry up, hurry up, we don't got to do it. Before that, Asana, 
I want to call her Oksana Bayal, but <laughs> but the the skater, but you know who I'm talking about. She actually falls into a bunch of those scarabs and they eat her alive. Yes. So she does end up dying anyways. Good. Continue. Sorry. You're good. So they're all at the top of the pyramid. Izzy shows up. They hop onto his flying ship in the sky. And then the very top of the pyramid is like this giant ass diamond. And Jonathan is like literally hanging upside down by one foot. And he's like, (laughs) I can get it. I can get it. And they're like, forget it. And he's like, no, I can't. And so Jonathan just has like this huge, like two hands diamond from the top of the pyramid so at least it was monetarily worth evie dying she got better (laughs) we got the kid we got the kid back evie's alive i have by izzy's account own half of that diamond rick and evie are about to have the best sex of their fucking life oh 100 percent. after death sex the best (laughs) resurrection sex (laughs) Uh. Oh, oh, G line by Evie. She's like, he's like, I, he was like, Rick was like, I thought I lost you. He's like, you did for a second. He's like, would you like to know what heaven's like? And he's like, later. And then they kiss. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm man. about to show you heaven, girl. <laughs> I learned and- some moves from the afterlife <laughs> to stop your soul away. <laughs> and that is the mummy returns. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we missed anything. So in order to keep his smooth, hairless look, the actor who played Imhotep had his entire body shaved twice a day. He tried waxing, couldn't stand the pain. And my boy Oded trained on horseback for months to prepare for his role. I would love to train train. with him. I would like to train with him as well, horseback style, any day. Thank you. Reverse cowgirl style? <laughs> any, any. Reverse, forward, back, front, back, whatever. <laughs> and apparently there is a novelization of this film that kind of fills in a lot of the gaps that we may have had questions. <laughs> There's also an animated show that was on afterwards, like I want to say in like the early 2010s, that was on the WB. It went oh. on for like three seasons. I used to watch that too. That was, it took place, I want to say, when uh, Alex is like a teenager, so mm-hmm. it was like three to five years from there. Oh, that's cool. I didn't realize that. Yeah. The mummy comes back again. Can't keep a good Imhotep down, man. <laughs> Ardith Bay is the only person in the film who refers to Imhotep as the creature. This is explained in that novelization that we just talked about which states that Ardith, as do all Magi, fears even referring to him as Emotep to name while the mummy is still in his undead form, calling him he that shall not be named. So is this where J.K. Rowling got this from? No, because I feel like the novelization would have had to been after this movie came out. And she wrote those books starting in 98. You're right, you're right. We'll see. Uh, I think that was probably... Yeah, so Ardith in the novel overcomes the unease and reluctantly calls him Emma by name after the mummy's regeneration. I'm going to buy the novel. (laughs) Please report back. Yes, definitely. (laughs) Sam, why don't you tell everyone your social handles for your podcast so that they can check out all they need to know about wonderful... I don't want to... Is, do you say nerd stuff? Is that like uh, geek, geek stuff? Geek nerd stuff. stuff geek nerd is stuff. probably more politically correct than nerd. Okay. I, I feel as though you can be a geek without being a nerd, but you, and you can be a nerd without being a geek. Nerd is more like book smart stuff. Geek is yes. more like you like a thing. Yes. Yeah. So my handles are uh, at four mins uh, on Twitter and Instagram, I believe. It's for the word, the spell the word for. F O U R. Yeah, M-I-N-S. Because people look for four minutes spelled out, but I was trying to make everything short, so it's four minutes. <laughs> and the four minutes, four minutes two podcast, four minutes two, four minutes two. At least search that anywhere we listen to podcasts, that's where you find it. We're also on the Rapture Press YouTube channel. I post a new episode with the that fault com- corresponds with the podcast. So if you want to watch it with like pictures and stuff, check out the Rapture Press website. The Rapture is a YouTube channel. Also go to the rapture.press. 
website. That's where I post some articles about comics I read because I read a lot of comics because the world is shitty and I'd like to escape into fantasy. So, <laughs> and yeah, that's what, and also check out the podcast, Four Minutes Two. That's where I talk about all things geek in under four minutes or your money back. So if you want like a BBC America news, kind of like quick news thing, but for like geek stuff, like you want to know when the next versus Godzilla versus King Kong movie is coming out, which is in 2024, or you want to know who's <laughs> just been cast in like, the latest Marvel movie, just check out the podcast. And as always, you guys can check us at No More Late Fees on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. Now that we got that out of the way, let's hear what your present day ratings of The Mummy Returns. Sam, we'll start with you. This is what we can use as like a perfect action movie. I mean, the racial components. <laughs> this is literally, this is what we, if you're looking for a campy action film, this is the movie. A lot of people tell us, a lot of people on the line say that this is their comfort movie, and I agree. It's just a great story in regards to like action, intrigue, scares, comedic timing. Everyone was doing what they needed to do. It helped that a lot of people were attractive in this movie. It was just an all around great movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love The Mummy Returns. So what's the rating? Oh, it's buy it, own it. I gotta own it. Okay, Jackie? I'm giving it a five day. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad I rewatched it. And aside from the CGI, it was, it was a fun movie to watch. I love the chemistry between Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weisz. Yeah, it's still a five day for me. I think it was fun. And now that I've seen it again... I can stop putting so much hate towards that little child and just realize it needs to be placed with his parents being horrible. But it's it's so much fun. It's an easy watch. I could totally see myself just having it play in the background and have a good laugh. Like you said, the whole cast chemistry is so wonderful. It just really truly makes me sad that they didn't finish the trilogy together. Mm -hmm. So, but we did it, y'all. We did it. We did do it. If you have an opinion and like to share it, give us a call at our quick drop 909 MLF 909-601-6653, twat us at our Twitter handle, or leave a message on our Anchor FM account. Leave us feedback, suggest future movies, what you liked, disliked about this episode. Give us corrections, share your blockbuster video stories or your favorite moments, and you can be featured on a future episode. And join us next week as we get ghostly with the 1995 classic Casper. I love Casper. I'm it's really a, excited. Such a <laughs> and as always, be kind and rewind.